Hello and welcome to Love Thy Lawyer, where we talk to real lawyers about their lives in and out of the practice of law, how they got to be lawyers, and what their experience has been. I'm Lewis Goodman, the host of the show, and yes, I'm a lawyer. Nobody's perfect. She served as a deputy district attorney in Alameda County. She handled countless misdemeanor and felony cases. She has an outstanding trial record. She worked in San Francisco obtaining referrals for individuals in need of social services. She worked for two years in the legendary Teach for America program and what was undoubtedly the most difficult four days of her life, she led a chaperone trip to Washington, D.C. with 88 students. Christine Saunders, welcome to Love Thy Lawyer. Thanks for having me, Lou. Looking forward to talking to you. It's a privilege to talk to you. I always enjoyed seeing you in court when you were in the district attorney's office, and I understand you left the district attorney's office recently to take a new position. What are you doing? I am currently the campaign manager for Jimmy Wilson, who is running for Alameda County District Attorney in 2022. Where is your campaign headquarters located? Our campaign headquarters right now are very remote. We are running all over the county, up and down, north, south, east, talking to folks in backyards, at restaurants, in their homes, virtually just getting Jimmy out into the community to hear what he has to say and his vision and future for the criminal justice system. Where are you from originally? So I was born in the Chicago suburbs, but I grew up most of my life down on the Monterey Peninsula. I uh, spent my high school years out in Pennsylvania and have since lived in Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. So kind of all over the place. What high school did you go to? Germantown Academy in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Is that a private school? It is, yeah. All yeah. girls? No, it's a it's a co-ed school. And actually, when I moved out there, I, I had a choice between an all-girls school and a co-ed school, and I, I went with the co-ed one. <laughs> well, I can understand why one might prefer a co-educational experience. Germantown was, Germantown was a lot of fun. It was a very sports-oriented school, and, and I played basketball there and softball. But I, I definitely was looking for a school with other kids that kind of hadn't grown up in that school environment because I moved out to Fort Washington just about a week before I started high school. And where's where's Fort Washington? Fort Washington is just outside of Philadelphia by about 10 minutes. When you graduated from high school, where'd you go to college? I went to USC, so down in Los Angeles. Did you like that experience? I loved it. I was thrilled when I got accepted into USC, and I, I really had a fantastic time. It's an incredible school with an incredible alumni community, and I am honored to be a part of it. What sort of activities did you take up at USC? When I was at USC, I actually spent a lot of time doing volunteer work in the community, tutoring youth in the area, which is how I ended up becoming interested in and ultimately joining the Teach for America uh, program. When you graduated from USC, did you go directly to law school or did you take some time off? When I graduated from USC, I went directly into Teach for America. So I was placed in the New York City Corps for Teach for America and was a TFA Corps member ambassador to a school in Brownsville, Brooklyn, which is in East Brooklyn, kind of where the three line and the L line meet up for those that know the New York City subway map. What did you think of that experience? It was one of the most eye-opening experiences of my life. It forever changed my life. The students that I worked with were absolutely incredible and resilient. You know, like I said, it was a student body of 250 students, all of whom were students of color that lived in one of the poorest communities in all five boroughs with one of the highest crime rates in all five boroughs of New York City. The school I taught in was, to say that it was underserved and underfunded does not do it justice. This was not 
anything like any school I had ever set foot in. And I have worked very hard ever since I was in that school and left that school to try and change that reality for students, for them and for students like them. Yeah, years ago, I worked as a counselor at a summer camp for the Boys Club in New York. And we we had a lot of kids from that neighborhood. So I I salute you for doing that work because I know how difficult it is and I, I know how hard it is to, to just kind of reach some of those kids. Yeah. You know, I, my children that I taught and the families that they came from were so desperate for, for someone to want to invest in them. You know, I had a, what I hope my students would describe as well as a wonderful relationship with the kids that I taught. I cared about them very, very, very deeply. When did you decide to go to law school? I decided to go to law school when I was teaching. You know, the environment that I worked in was an environment where I felt like my teachers needed a legal advocate as much as they needed a teacher. My principal was actually handcuffed and walked out of the school in my second year teaching. And I did get connected to some people in law enforcement through through that situation. But, you know, I, I also went through a lot personally uh, being in that environment. And, you know, at, at that time felt like I wanted to go off and kind of do something for myself a little bit. And law school was the thing that I decided to do. <laughs> so where'd you go to law school? I went to law school at UC Hastings. My family was back in the Bay Area at that time, and I I wanted to come out here and be closer to family. So I came back out to California and and went to school at UC Hastings. What did you think of the Hastings experience? You know, I loved it, but my family was uh, from San Francisco. I had a lot of friends in the area from college and otherwise in the city. So I really enjoyed being at a school in San Francisco where my family was located. And I've made some of my closest and most dear friends from my experience in law school. So, so I had a really great experience. And also, you know, being at UC Hastings is what ultimately got me into the Alameda County DA's office. So for that, I will be forever grateful. Yeah. You know, I went to Hastings too. And I've said on this podcast before that I really had a great experience there. And, you know, now that you mention it, yeah, I mean, that's how I got into the Alameda County DA's office too, is because of connections I made directly through Hastings that I never would have had had I not been at Hastings. So yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, absolutely. And I was a part of the moot court program at Hastings, which is just, it's run by Tony Young and um, she's still there. And she just did has did and has done such an incredible job with the Hastings moot court program. And I have to say the skills I learned through moot court at Hastings have carried me through my professional life. And, and so I really felt like this school set me up for success. Well, you were kind of a star in moot court, weren't you? I did a couple of moot court competitions. I really, really enjoyed it. And I actually ended up summering with the Alameda County DA's office with with one of the girls that I did the moot court program with. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun doing the moot court program. Do you think that having taken some time off between college and law school and worked in the teaching environment helped you focus when you got to law school? Absolutely. I went into law school with a, with a very different attitude, I think, than most of my classmates. You know, law school can be very grueling and it can be very stressful, but it was a very different kind of stress than the stress I'd experienced in my job as a teacher. How did you happen to go to the Alameda County District Attorney's Office? Well, I was lucky enough to get into the summer law clerk program. So I was, I summered at the Alameda County DA's office the year after my 2L year. And I joined the office in January after I graduated. So passed the bar and then joined a couple of months later. What did you think of being a deputy district attorney? I loved working with victims and interacting with the public. Um, I really enjoyed, you know, helping victims find a path 
through the criminal justice system that left them with a sense of hope and a sense of justice. If a young person were graduating now from, let's say, USC, and they were thinking about a career, would you recommend law as a career to go into? Yes, if it fits your personality. I mean, as I said before, you know, I think one of the most important things you can do in deciding what you want to do in your life is to really take the time to sit back and think about what makes you happy. You know, your job is such an enormous part of your life. I mean, especially as a lawyer, and I can only speak from my experience practicing criminal law, but, you know, the hours are long to do the job right. The hours are, are long and it can be very stressful. And so, you know, it becomes just a part of who you are. What do you think is the best advice you've ever received? The best advice that I've ever received, be true to yourself and trust your gut. And above all else, always do the right thing. You know, my my closest mentors and advisors at the office have always told me that. And I think especially um, in the work that we do as trial attorneys, that's incredibly important. I think it's easy to walk into a courtroom and to see how another attorney is trying a case and to think, wow, I should try that or I could do that. But at the end of the day, you know, when you're standing up in front of a jury or you're in a courtroom, you know, the most important thing that you can do is to be true to yourself, be true to who you are, trust your gut. And like I said, above all else, always do the right thing. Yeah, I think that authenticity really shows in any endeavor, but perhaps especially in trial work. Yeah, in so many many ways when you're standing in front of that jury, I mean, for lack of a better description, you know, you're naked in front of them. Do you think the legal system's fair? No, I don't think it's fair. But I think that it can be with the right leadership. I don't think that the system is unfixable. I just think it hasn't been fixed. So I don't think it's fair, but I I think we can get there. What's your family life been like and how has practicing law affected that? (laughs) My family life has changed a lot uh, since I started practicing law. So I got married when I was, had been in the office for about a year. And since joining the DA's office in 2013, I've had two children. So I have a three-year-old, Anna, and a 17-month-old, Sophie. So, you know, my family life has changed a lot over the course of my career. And and I definitely, you know, having kids needed to find a better way to separate the work that we were doing from the life I was living at home. How did you do that? You know, I've always been someone who did a lot of work at home. I always studied at home when I was in law school. And so, you know, I think for me, it was just about separating those two things. And I got better better about it with time. Have you had any interesting travel experience? <laughs> yes, yes. I've actually had a lot of interesting travel experience. Where have you I, been? Uh, between uh, law school, well, actually, so between Teach for America and law school, I worked in an orphanage in Hadong province, uh, about 45 minutes north of Hanoi, Vietnam. And I worked out there for about two months before traveling by bus from Hanoi through Vietnam, Cambodia, and ultimately on to Thailand. So I did that with a very dear friend of mine who went to college with me, was my maid of honor, went to law school with me, and is now a stand-up comedian. So it was a fantastic trip, also very eye-opening. But yeah, no, that was that was an interesting travel experience. I also studied abroad. I, I lived in Madrid when I was in college for six months. Um, and I lived in Vitoria Castillas in Northeast Spain when I was 15 for about three months. So done a lot of traveling. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do. What sort of things keep you up at night these days? This campaign keeps me up at night. You know, I, I stay up at night hoping that I am doing everything I can to make this campaign a success for the community, for the office. I believe in the work that we're doing. You know, the the stress I have now is uh, very similar to the stress I experienced when I was teaching. So that's what keeps me up at night right now. Let's say you came into some real money, a few billion dollars, three or four billion dollars. (laughs) Yeah. What, if anything, would you change in your life? In my own life? Yeah, in your own life. You know, I don't think that there's much I would change about my own personal life. Um, 
but I definitely would want to use that money uh, to invest in education in our communities and nonprofits in our communities that can serve that can serve our youth before they ever reach the criminal justice system. You know, I think one of the things that I've learned throughout life, whether that's my work in Teach for America or work or my work at the district attorney's office, is that so much crime in our community is so preventable if we just put our minds together as a collective to invest in our youth and our communities, you know, early on, right out the gate. Let's say you had a magic wand. There was one thing that you could change in the legal world or the world in general. What would that be? Oh, gosh. (laughs) If there was one thing I could change um, about the world. I think that the one thing, if I could wave my wand and change one thing about the world today, is that I wish that... I really, I wish that access to education in this country were equitable. I wish that I could wave a wand and provide our public schools with equal access to quality education for all of our kids. I I really think that education or a lack thereof is at the root of so many of the struggles that we encounter in our society. I think that we have the ability to do this and it's frustrating that it doesn't happen, but that's definitely, if I could wave a wand and change one thing, that's what I'd want to change. So Christine, you have been working very hard and diligently on Jimmy Wilson's uh, DA campaign. And as someone who has run for office, I know how hard it is. I know how lonely it can be. And I'm wondering if you have some thoughts or emotions about just being involved in a campaign that you might share with us for people who haven't actually been on the inside of a campaign. Yeah, so you know, campaigning has been a steep learning curve. It's a uh, it's a new it's a new field for me, and you know, I I definitely say it's very exciting um, to you know get involved with something new and and to be doing uh, something very different than what I was doing before. You know, for people considering getting into law, I think getting involved with political campaigns, whatever your politics are is something that's very interesting because I think a lot of the skills that you need and develop as a lawyer are things that you use through the campaigning process. You know, campaigning has been, it feel, can feel very isolating at times. You know, you and I talked about that uh, briefly. Um, but, you know, it's also something that makes you feel very connected to the community as you get out there and talk to folks and hear what they have to say and, and kind of listen to their concerns. And, and so in that way it is, it is the opposite of isolating. It's actually uh, very, very fascinating to get out into the community and interact with people in a very different way. So, you know, that part of it, that part of it's been really enjoyable, but it's a slog, you know, as, as you know, and, and as we always say, it's a marathon, not a race. And, and, you know, it's definitely a new, a slightly new role to be in. I've done fundraising through. Yeah. What do you think about raising money? What do you think about fundraising? Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting. And and political fundraising is particularly interesting. You know, I've done a lot of fundraising for work around education and, and nonprofits. So in that way, I have had the conversation with people where I've asked them to part with their money. But I think, you know, politics and campaigning, People don't really, I mean, I know I definitely didn't didn't before joining a campaign. People don't really understand, you know, the cost of running a campaign. And and I I don't think people have a clear understanding of exactly what is happening to their money <laughs> when they send their money into a political campaign. And I'm certainly trying to to sort of pull back the curtain and help people understand well, you know, what is what, happening to their money. <laughs> You're spending money printing yard signs, door knockers, 
doing mailers, digital and TV ads, if you're talking about a really contested contest, putting on events. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, just I was just looking at, you know, the cost of yard signs as, as just an example. And if you. Yeah. What is a what is a yard sign cost? You know, people see these yard <laughs> signs out there and don't pay any attention whatsoever. And yet. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, a yard sign. So practical realities, right? A yeah. yard sign be waterproof and and when you're talking about the different colors of a campaign that go into it but let's say you know a yard sign on average and of course this changes depending on how many yard signs you're printing but let's say you know a yard sign costs about eight dollars you know three hundred and fifty thousand potentially yard signs that you need to put at eight bucks at eight bucks a pop up you know you're talking about real money right yeah so you know i guess The math is kind of one yard sign gives you six to 10 voters, depending if you're in a rural or an urban area. And that's just an example. That's just one example of the costs that go into campaigning. Well, like, you know, those uh, Alameda County also has one of the most expensive media markets in the United States. So, you know, I think you're looking at needing to raise between a million and two million dollars. So you Uh, do you think it's going to take between a million and two million in order to run this campaign? You know, I don't know that for sure. It's interesting because we don't have a lot of points of reference. And this will be the first open race for DA in modern Alameda County history. All of the candidates need to raise you know, a good amount of money to be competitive in this contest and really get their message out to registered voters in the county. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> it's hard and expensive. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's different work. It's different than anything I've done before. And, and in that way, it's exciting, but it's certainly challenging. Christine Saunders, thank you so much for joining me today on the Love Thy Lawyer podcast. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Likewise, Lou. Thank you very much for having me today. That's it for today's episode of Love Thy Lawyer. If you enjoyed listening, please share it with a friend and subscribe to the podcast. If you have comments or suggestions, send me an email. I promise I'll respond. Take a look at our website at lovethylawyer.com, where you can find all of our episodes, transcripts, photographs, and information. Thanks, as always, to my guests who share their wisdom. And to Joel Katz for music, Brian Matheson for technical support, and Tracy Harvey. I'm Lewis Goodman. So let me, let me start that over. I, I, so I would love to just talk about sort of a little bit like off the record for the podcast, but but I'd love to, I, not off the record for the podcast, but just for this, just to tell you what I want to talk about. I, I would love to talk about sort of like. And, well, you know, I mean, ultimately, I'm going to just take a look at this in the edit and decide whether it fits or doesn't fit.